Alrighty. Okay, I think we're live. Hello, hello. My name is Gabriel Quinn. I am an illustrator, character designer, world builder, all that fun stuff. And yeah, welcome back to casual character concept. Character design, casual character design. That's the name of the series now. That's what we're calling it. It's casual character design with Gabriel Quinn. <laughs> We came up with a name. Um, yeah, welcome guys. We're just getting started today. Um, we're just gonna be doing some casual character design. Um, I picked up an old project that uh, I started a while ago. It was for an indie game pitch. It was in collaboration with somebody. I never posted it. Um, just some fun little character portrait sketches. It was gonna be for a 2D, um, like choices matter, strategy resource management style game where uh it was gonna be like it was gonna be like oh that's unrelated like text box stuff so you could like talk to the characters and they were these kind of like world war ii bomber style character guys um but before we get started exciting announcement well not exciting announcement long time coming um brush pack i'm just dropping the file in the discord right this second so let's go <laughs> finally got the discord to uh not the discord finally got the um the brushes to everybody <laughs> this is just my beta brush pack you know nothing too nothing too crazy um so yeah gonna drop that in in the resources section of the discord which is gonna be pretty cool um we got adele in the chat welcome adele and mojo what up guys let's go let's go oh man you know so I do a lot of volunteer work. I love volunteer work, personally. I love it. And um, since I moved to New York, I've been doing a ton of it. And it's crazy how it's like a, an organized volunteer uh, campaign or whatever. Like, man, they will they will really, really take your time. <laughs> or, or, sorry, I shouldn't say that. It's more like uh, it's like a full-time job, the amount of communication. But it's great because, you know, being a service is such a gift in this life. But yeah, so let's get started here. I was thinking that we would just kind of sketch, you know, in a similar kind of style. Um, this this guy I sketched with, I um, can't remember which brush this guy was sketched with. This was with the kind of HB modified brush that I love a lot. So I'm going to be using that as well, which will be nice. Um, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, a bit of a slow start today and streaming a little bit later than usual. Um, <laughs> I guess I can kind of just stop saying it's been a crazy week because like every week is turning into a crazy week. So, you know, we're just a little bit, uh, we're just a little bit, a little, little bit uh, behind this week, but we're killing it today, this epic Friday. Cool. And I'm just gonna post that I'm live in the Discord. Boom, boom, boom. Let's go. Yeah, so we're just gonna be doing some character sketching today. As per usual. I should start to um I should start to uh like put a little timestamp to when we like actually start drawing versus when I start the stream because there's always like a thing I forgot to do right when I go live and I'm like oh I gotta do that but yeah so the inspiration behind these guys was kind of like looking at a lot of World War II uniforms kind of inventing the sort of like you know punkish scoutish like diesel punk kind of scout vibe and I was thinking that these different characters have different motifs and uh you know like with um one that I designed later, which was one of my favorite ones. He's the scout and he has a little acorn badge. And this character, she's she's cold as ice and she's got a, a snowflake badge, you know. And uh, she's probably Russian most likely. But, you know, each of them has a kind of specialty. So you can kind of put them on your team to kind of boost their stats or whatever. Just kind of like world building stuff. We love world building. It's pretty, it's pretty fun. But yeah, this is a totally interactive stream, so anybody who has any questions, feel free to ask. Last time we talked a lot about networking. We talked a lot about like how to talk to artists that you admire and whatnot. That was really interesting. 
Um, today, I don't really know what we're going to talk about, but um, yeah, I'm going to be live for a little bit. I think like hour and a half, probably hour and a half, two hours. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Cool, cool, cool. So let's get into it. Let's get after it. So yeah, drawing with our, with our, oh, we got nabs in the chat. Welcome nabs. Yeah, drawing with our um, kind of brush pack we've been tuning up and working on. I guess we can just work in this other file that we've been working in for a while. Um, or not for a while, but we kind of did all the brush tests in here. So we can kind of maybe work off this page some. It's interesting returning to kind of old work and seeing the kind of ideas you were having, what you were drawing, you know, both with like some new appreciation and uh, with some critique as well you know like you're always going to see stuff that uh that you could improve on mojo asks how we all doing i'm doing great man i'm doing really really great um and i hope you're doing well too got our little iced coffee today doing some iced coffee today hmm. man it's been such like a a crucible of a month like just a lot of experiences a lot of new ideas a lot of uh you know coming up with solutions figuring out direction in life it's like big things you know definitely big things that's great yeah man yeah thanks mojo it is it's pretty great it's like uh sometimes it takes a lot of kind of fumbling around to realize what was right in front of you, you know? I don't know, that's like a bit of a meme, but we, 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 we like it. So, yeah, I mean, you know what? Let's just do some like warm ups. Let's do some, some, uh, just some like get the hand moving, you know? Do some cylinders, some just like form practice. All that fun stuff. It's been a while since I've just like drawn cubes and boxes and like things in perspective. It's been a minute. So I've kind of had the opportunity to like really get into it, you know? Pernish Kate says, oh, hello, I'm early. Yep, early on. We're just getting started. We're just sketching some random stuff right now. Some random stuff. Yeah, random stuff. Man, do you guys ever do like cafe sketching where you like draw the interior of the cafe from like a different perspective angle? That stuff helped me so much with perspective. My goodness. Like saved my life. HD's in the chat. HD says, hello, how are you all doing? Speaking for myself, pretty great, man. Man, I love how kind everyone in the chat is. It's just kind of, it's kind of awesome. All right, let's draw some guys. Who's this guy? This guy. I feel like you know what we're gonna do. We're gonna give him like the knife, the knife badge. He's gonna have like a knife-esque badge. Or something. Kind of want this guy to be like almost, almost villainous, like pseudo villainous. A lot of vertical lines, you know, we're going to give him heavy, heavy bags under the eyes. Probably this kind of like 
scowl look. There was one thing we sketched out earlier last time. We sketched this guy out with a with one of the brushes, and I just loved the simplicity of this guy. Like how you know the shapes are just feeling really nice here. The character feels very clear, you know. So kind of going off of that, I want to definitely make sure I'm I'm having that same clarity going in. And actually, you know, we'll use. We'll use a slightly different brush for this, I think. For that crisp. Vibe we're going for. Michael's in the chat. Let's go. The homie Michael Relf. He's in the chat. Man, speaking of brush packs, Michael, uh, <laughs> I remember I found... Michael Ralph has a great brush pack for Procreate. Definitely go pick that up for sure. Um, I remember I found some guy on our station who was like selling everyone's brush pack for like a dollar, like just uh, just blatant theft, just like whatever. And I remember seeing Michael's brush pack being like, isn't this, isn't this my buddy Michael's brush pack that this dude is just you know, like bootlegging on art station store for like a dollar. I was like, this is so bad. Yo, we got Colin in the chat too. Let's go. All the homies. Excellent. 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 Yeah. Let's just get some stuff on the page, man. Let's not get too, too caught up. Yeah, we'll work backwards, you know, in the explorative phase of character design, you can really just kind of like let it loose, especially if you're going. So the method we're using right now is not working off of a brief. Um, I mean, we could do that, but we're not necessarily working off of a brief. We're right now just kind of like assigning roles to stuff that we draw. So we're kind of finding the characters as we go. We're kind of like letting them appear on the page based off of just kind of intuitive drawing, like letting drawing be a research tool in and of itself. That's one thing that, you know, that when I was in art school, um, that was actually one thing I remember that was actually uh, a pretty revelatory concept, which was um, drawing as a form of research. Because it's good for your project to do a lot of research, primary research, secondary research, you know, all that stuff. And I remember that, like, they're like, you know, a form of primary research is drawing for your project. And I was like, huh. That's really interesting. And ever since then, I've seen drawing as a part of how I think, part of how I learn, part of how I appreciate, and when working on projects and developing IPs, definitely part of the research process. It's not just about gathering reference and drawing from the reference. It's like using drawing as a tool to explore as well. True. Oh, also the the beta brush pack that's in the Discord now that I just like dropped in there in the resource section. The uh, it's uh, an ever evolving thing. So I think I want to have a final version available for people to actually like purchase if they want. Um, towards I think the end of the year. So you know I'll be getting your guys's feedback and stuff from like the beta of everybody who's like you know in the in the Patreon Discord can like help me test and whatnot, which will be cool, I think. Got our first pancake drawing here. Just some random, random dude. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes with sketching, I like have it in my head that sometimes sketches like have to be messy for like concepting or ideating. And it's interesting because at like an atelier, like Watts Atelier, they really believe that every stage of the drawing should be beautiful. Even the, the rough sketch, the placement, like there should be beauty in every every step. And I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. 
I don't know if I agree or disagree. A part of me agrees and a part of me is skeptical. I think as with any, you know, rule for art, there's always a part of me that goes like, you know, we shouldn't have hard rules. But those kinds of methodologies and ideologies and mindsets, you know, that's part of what creates style. All right, this guy's pretty boring, but we're just going to keep drawing. I'm just going to keep on going. When in doubt, keep on going. Andres Aponte says, I think as artists, we can appreciate sketches no matter how messy. It's part of the charm. You know, that's a great point. Fantastic point. Man, adding a chunky mustache, there's nothing like it. There's simply nothing like it. Jarrett says, hey, I caught one. Nice to see you, Gabe. Love the face. Thanks, Jarrett. Yeah, we're, we're figuring it out. We're figuring out this face. Keeping it loose. Jarrett the homie. cool you know character design can kind of be anything right that's what's so vague about it as a concept it can be so specific so loose it can be purely technical purely gestural hard to really define which is why it's hard to place yourself you know in the field and people who want to get into the field, it's like hard to know what it even means to pursue character design. Colin says, OMG, just saw the brush pack drop. Let's go. Dude, let's go indeed. We got Abe in the chat. Abe says, yo, everyone, got to catch the train. Just here to say hi. Dude, thanks for saying hi. We love you, Abe. Based? Colin says, now I can leave the Discord. Woo. <laughs> yeah, get that train, Abe. Don't miss that train. All right. This is a classic, just a little chunky drawing of a guy, you know. Who is he? What does he dream about? Who is this guy? I feel like this guy's divorced. You know? He's got the sad brokenness of a divorced man, I feel. You know, he like puts on a face. He's like, huh, you know, don't have to deal with this anymore or anything like that. But deep down, he's just, there's an emptiness and aimlessness. Doesn't quite know, doesn't quite know how to deal. Doesn't quite know what to do with himself, I feel. So he joined the rebel forces because that's what we're drawing. We're drawing weird military-esque rebel people today, maybe. <laughs> I mean, we can kind of do whatever, but but yeah. Jared says, what if the hair was super messy and disheveled? Like a general whose army is getting wrecked and he's he's in the tent freaking out. True, you know, that could be, We could we could do like a, a a struggling leader you know like a tough a tough like a leader who's uh breaking down you know one thing i love to do is to like take a design just like slide it over and just push it You know, there's no one stopping you from just making more dudes, doing more stuff. 
it's a great way to uh if you like want to post a lot of designs it's a great way to like <laughs> make it seem like you have like a large volume of work just kind of <laughs> just kind of push things around you know i love making the mustache move with the face He's just so tired. He's so unbelievably tired. He doesn't know what to do. Hmm. No, he's standing tall. He's trying to figure it out. He doesn't have a sneer though. He's like sullen, right? He's, he's, he's sullen. He knows, he knows the challenges ahead for him. You know, he knows what it means to lead. The trials and tribulations, you know, I always give my characters cheekbones. Let's try, let's try to make sure we, uh, we stay diverse you know we don't want to just do the same thing for every single character even though cheekbones are fun i love cheekbones some razor sharp cheekbones let's go Yeah, right now we're using the fun sketch bold from our little our little pack that we're developing. All right, let's simplify our lines down. If you have too many lines, you know, you uh start to mess up a little bit. I um I remember learning this idea, and I really really love this idea that if your if your sketches are too rough, right? If you do a lot of scribble sketches or like you you have like a drawing and the drawing is like like very very like hairy lines and stuff on every side you know and and all that stuff and you kind of have just like a lot of looseness and, and everything like that and it's like very energetic like like when you go to clean it up and like put down the right lines you find the drawing is worse than when it was super loose and that is because your brain is like finding the right line and focusing on it and ignoring the rest and when you try to consciously find the right line, you just like get wrecked because you don't actually know. You can't consciously do it. Your, your conscious mind is not caught up with your intuition, you know? Jarrett says he looks like the guy who knows he will have to make the ultimate sacrifice for the cause. He's accepted it, but now he's trying to determine the route that has the least casualties for his comrades. Exactly. You know, you gotta, you gotta remember these things, these things are taxing, right? When you're, when you're when you are, uh, if you have insurmountable odds ahead of you, you know some things are going to go wrong. You know mistakes will be made, and in the case of of conflict, armed conflict, those mistakes, you know, end up being lives. So if we're to give him a hat, right? So we have the other guys, and they all have like these kind of like crew hats, these sort of like wintry hats. You know, it's just a fun little design. You know, nothing too crazy. But if they all have these kind of little hat guys, then I'm trying to think, like, what do we give him? Because if he's the commander, is he the commander? Have we decided that yet? Then what do we do, you know? I feel like if we do that, <laughs> thumbnail, <laughs> if we do that, maybe we want to give him a more distinguished look. This one feels a little bit more, like, natural, you know, a little bit more gestural, I guess. But we're trying to find the right design. So we're just going to keep trying. We're going to copy these over again because we can. We can. 
That's what's so cool about digital art is that we can just do that. Like, how cool is that? Right? Let's move these guys in the middle. So let's see, maybe we have this guy. We can play with certain elements of costume in, right? Because if you're designing a character and you design it and then you're like, okay, this is done, now let's do the costume. No, 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 no. The costume has to work with the character. So if we put this guy in an officer's hat that's like more kind of traditionally an officer's hat, like a war a wartime officer's hat or something. We have to make that work with the design. Same with the collar. Everything has to work. Everything has to work and it has to flow. Mojo says, yo, when do you think the next CDC is? Honestly, I'm down to do it right after the stream. This evening, I know we, we have not been on schedule this week for the character design challenges in the Discord. Got to get back on it, man. I'm feeling myself get rusty. I feel like that hat isn't necessarily grand enough. Like, I feel like we need some, we need the hat to be a little bit like, almost like commanding on him. But wait, we gotta make sure we have the old heads too, I think. Like, I feel like it needs to go out a bit on each side. Something more gestural, you know? Yeah, something like that. A little bit bigger and this is made up right this is this is kind of not even alternate history well yeah it's kind of alternate history just different different reality where things are just like a little off you know and one thing i love is kind of the fun strange aesthetic of like old military uniforms like some of them are so goofy and strange but um yeah like like there's an appeal, you know, like a strange appeal to old design. So let's see, let's see. This is feeling pretty nice. We can give him kind of a high collar on this one coming forward more. Kind of help that silhouette. Maybe it's a little big on the front. That feels a little bit stronger shape wise. Not too goofy, you know, something, something too much can be goofy. We don't want it to feel goofy. Can increase the size though a little bit bring it down there it is that feels nice right this guy looks more like a private a little bit like it's not quite the design we want for military this feels a lot more distinguished and here the hat's kind of almost acting like eyebrows in a way cutting off the eye line there Right, and of course the shit it'll it'll cast a really nice shadow on the face, placing him in darkness, which is always good for like a leader character to be able to light them effectively. Maybe he hasn't had time to shave all that much, so he's a little bit more of a disheveled leader, but that does not mean he's not effective. There's also the option of potentially, you know, if we just work with this design, if we just ax this a little bit to 
do like a like a tall kind of fur hat that could potentially be interesting man I'm in too many group chats you know when you're in too many group chats and just like things are popping off all the time Pernish get says now he's very pointy and Saman's here welcome Saman welcome to the chat we got all the friends all the friends in the chat let's go yeah I feel like we can give him like a intense hat if we wanted to but if we do that, his posture has to be like perfect, I think. Where like this head is not quite. He needs to be either like more dead eyed. You know, and what's cool about designing for this type of game maybe is like maybe your choices affect how the characters get promoted. Maybe he gets promoted into like a different role or something, you know? But yeah, like choosing an outcome, choosing an end goal, a product, something to make sure your characters are grounded in some kind of purpose can help you with design if you're feeling like it's too open. Like I love just open IP design stuff, but not for everybody. Give him this kind of sunken look. Hmm. Yes. Very sunken indeed. Cool. I like this one too, but he's like a little too Frankenstein. Like he's, this would more be like the enemy, I feel like cold cold and like calm collected ready to just destroy you know destroy the peace doesn't really care about the world too much man how do you get like that as a person to the point where you could like command military and do like acts of war like how like what what kind of guy would you be or like what kind of experiences would you have that you could end up like that? I feel like, I don't know, man, you're like 50 and you've been in like a hundred battles or, or like you've, you've done so much, you know, so much combat. Like I can't imagine what that could do to a person. I'm liking this version. This version is definitely the winner for me right now. I think this, this guy, he's, it's feeling pretty good. I feel like we just need to curve it in a little bit so it's not too outlandish. Let's flip it around, make sure the design works. And we need some kind of like crest, right, on the front. Something to distinguish, like... He's like a member of the thing or i guess not because they're they're these are rebel forces right so it's like they're they're not necessarily so so put together so what's like a what would be a good solution to like signifying command that would be like very cheap very easy but it's still like somewhat orderly you know like what would they give them would it just be a patch and the front has to be flat. Can I make that work? Hmm. I feel like maybe it's less... We'll, we'll take the pressure off the hat. The hat can just be a hat, I think. Nah, no, because it's fun because everyone else has, like, cool 
cool hats, right? Let's do the flag. So whatever the nation that they're fighting for, whatever the flag is, that's what we'll put here on his hat. So he's like clearly for this, for this like nation, you know, maybe it's like a nation that is like, well, you know, what's interesting is that when I started designing this, I don't know if the Ukraine conflict had started or maybe the Ukraine conflict had just started and it was like in my subconscious when I was designing or like coming up with the ideas and stuff. But, you know, it could be like a nation that's trying to be erased, they're trying to erase their nation. So it's kind of like a bold, proud statement of like, you know, this will continue like that kind of character. And then we'll put like the kind of commander markings and whatever, like those like patches on his on his collar, because the other characters, I don't think we have them on their collars. We have them kind of on their arm, on their main hat as well. You know, like some ideas here and there. Do we have one for the anyone? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that's that's pretty cool. That's pretty fun, I think. All right, so we tried some other ideas. We're going to go with these ones, I think. But this one I feel like has potential. You know, for something. Maybe like a an alternate expression or like if you're in the game and you catch him like shaving or you have a conversation with him while he's like shaving or something, you see him without his uniform on, kind of humanizes him maybe in, in some way. Or just like him out of uniform. Could even be like him with, with closed eyes. All right, so we did a we did a gruff old mustache guy. So we filled our quota for that for today. Let's do some other designs. Like, you know, unfortunately, what can happen in these conflicts is very young people get caught up in them. So we can we can imagine kind of a younger character, kind of being being caught up in the in the conflict, what they might be doing. You know, like maybe the bomb maker or someone who's like making some kind of explosive device or something could be. quite young like like the only reason they're allowed to do it is because no one else can like that kind of idea there's that great character in uh in atlantis the disney film of like uh the engineer girl who's like the best engineer and they brought her along because no one can do what she could do you know the hat might be like big on them like almost cover their eyes you know Maybe like it does a little bit. Like this kind of character. <laughs> I love this kind of character. They're so great. Let's also bring in actually, you know, I flattened this out for the thumbnail for today. Like let's actually bring this in as like our style check to make sure we're in alignment with the style. Yeah, okay, sick. Jarrett says, I feel like there is always a kid who is overly excited for the cause and inexperienced and another young one who feels the weight and gravity of the situation and struggles with the trauma of war. Yeah, it's a classic pairing, classic duality, classic dynamic. And it's great because it, you know, covers a lot of narrative truths, man. The naive who like glorify conflict and the ones who have actually been in it.
I feel like maybe this kid is like in charge of the like inventory or like something like mundane, but he's like very good at it. Like this kind of kid, right? The kind of scratchy, scratched up, scratched up cheeks. His hat's definitely bigger on him than the other characters' hats are on them. But not too big, not comically big. But big enough, right? So we're filling out our cast here. We're giving ourselves a lot of characters to play off of each other. We can start to imagine some of the dialogue that would happen between them. Some of the core conflict, you know. One thing I was thinking of uh, initially is like maybe this girl is quite uh, sharp, you know. Uh, it's like very intense well, like I don't want to say sassy, but like appointed, appointed individual, a lot of opinions. And the scout character like never speaks, but like has a romantic thing for this character, but he never has the courage to say anything because she's very scary, you know? Um, wow. Arrowix just joined the chat, said, hello, I'm finally able to catch one of your lives and ends up that I have to go. Ah, oh, sorry, Arrowix. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining the chat. And uh, <laughs> I hope you can catch another one soon. Um, it feels like no matter what time I stream at, I'm always missing somebody. So <laughs> sorry about that, man. And Sam says, Atlantis was a cool film. The art style was inspired by Mike Mignola. I think he designed the bomb maker. Huh? Based. It's very chunky. It's very, very him for sure. Mojo says, how do you think you got to the point of drawing convincing portraits spontaneously? Was it from pure repetition or studying from reference? Um, ah, man, I am always having a tough time uh, answering this question. Because I still don't feel like my portraits are that convincing. I mean, some. some. I don't, like, I like these ones. These ones are fine. How do you think you got to the point of drawing convincing portraits spontaneously? Was it from pure repetition or studying from reference? Hmm, that's tough. Well, I'll tell you, towards the end of high school, I wanted to improve. And, you know, I would watch a lot of guys like Sykra and, and stuff on YouTube. And, you know, they would break down the head. Uh, into all these sections so like you know if you had the if you had a head then the eye sockets would be halfway between the top and the bottom the nose would be halfway in between the eyes and the chin and the mouth would be halfway in between that and that was an easy way to place your reference and the eyes the middle of the eyes would be the corner of the mouth the eyes would be an eye with the part Right, like the hairline for men would be a little bit lower than the hairline for women would be. The eyebrows would be higher on women than they would be for men, typically, not always, typically. And like cheekbones, whatever. And then the ears would be from the top of the eyebrow to the nose, right? And I would like learn those proportions. You'd learn those proportions. Um, and for me, I learned those proportions and it was kind of just like my Bible, you know? I would just fill my sketchbook with drawings that were just that just like the, that kind of face over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Um, and I would draw like a million faces from head on view and then from portrait view. I would draw so many faces from portrait view because it was easy. All I had to do was measure it out, right? Because the eyes would be here. Hello. The nose would be here. Boop, boop, boop. Mouth would be here. Right. And then the ear for forehead hair would do that. Right. And I would just do that so many times, but, the issue was when I got into the world of three quarter view, I didn't practice as much. Right. And Sykra, bless his heart, did not teach the Loomis method or those other proportions, you know? So it's kind of like, um, for me, there was a bit of a gap in three quarter and yet, and yet like I can draw three quarter faces now. They're fine. Like I, I love drawing three quarter faces. I love drawing faces from all different angles. It's fun. Um, I think that once you understand what a face is and where the points of like, gosh, 
where where you're where where things get uncomfortable right because like why is it that a drawing that we did last time oh sorry same file drawing we did last time like this one like makes sense you know what i mean like it obviously doesn't but it it kind of makes sense still and what's interesting is that moving certain elements around even if i move the mouth up a little bit this still makes sense it's a different guy but it makes sense but the second i do this it doesn't make sense it feels really weird you know i mean there's a world where you could make that work but it feels strange you know you need enough space for even imaginary anatomy to kind of come in and, and and do some work but convincing portraits it's a tough question man it's a tough question I don't know if I have a clear answer as per usual, <laughs> but it was a lot of repetition and I did do a lot of studies from reference. Actually, I did do some studies, not as many as you'd think, but I have done a few, a few good old, good old studies, self portraits, you know, drawing my friends and stuff. More recently, I've been doing more studies of other people. That's been helping my work a lot, actually. studies help but like if you ah oh man because i know so if you draw too much from imagination your designs are homogenous if you draw too much from reference there's no life um you got to be able to find a balance where you're still present in your studies and the studies are present in the work that you do just from imagination i think personally but hey that's just me So instantly what's standing out to me with this character is the inaccuracy of how the hat is sitting on the head. Um, so we're going to fix that. Right? If this hat is on this character's head and it's kind of almost covering their eyes, it would be going down, which means these parts would be like coming forward. Because it would be like hanging forward and like hanging back. So it would almost be coming forward. This would be going more, more to the back, I feel. Even that feels a little weird. Well, we can do another drawing and see how we go. Mojo says, dude, I hate drawing other people where you have to show them the drawing because I can never focus with that in mind and it doesn't look like them. Yeah, so likeness is hard likeness is not easy it's a skill in of itself and you got to get over that fear if you want to if you want to break through in that area of, of achieving likeness um there are fundamentals you can learn right like so placement is huge so when you're drawing uh it's super easy to get tunnel vision of a face right and you're drawing and you're like well their nose is shaped like because you can be doing this right you're like well their eye is shaped like this and they're they have a strong eyebrow and it trails the eyebrow trails off and the eyelids very distinct on this person and and their nose comes comes down and and their nose comes down like this and their and their nostril comes out like 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 here and it flares around and that's a very dark line and and then their mouth kind of does this and their other eyes their other eyes over and their other eyes got this here and their eyelids over there and they do a thing and then their you know their bottom lip is very round and their chin comes out like that and they their jaw comes up and their ears and like look at these proportions that's not the person you're drawing right this is like you've gotten lost on the trail drawing whatever details whereas if you think about placement you're like okay Let's get their skull down. Where's their hairline? Their hairline's here. Give yourself, like, work with a lighter pencil, like a colored pencil, maybe a lighter pencil. Like, boom, their hairline's here. Done, done, done. And then let's see actually where how far down their, their face is, right? So their chin goes a little bit lower on their skull. Their ears place farther back. Their, their eyes in this kind of area. This is the kind of plane of their face. Their nose kind of comes out a little bit here in this area and, and all that stuff. And then you're dealing with, like, the actual person you're drawing and then you go into the details after you've placed things right and 
place their nose, place their whatever, and then you can actually have a convincing portrait. The crimson chin, exactly. <laughs> Mojo says, watch as Gabriel destroys my entire art process. <laughs> uh, is that what you do? Do you like go feature by feature? Because that's everybody makes that mistake. Don't don't feel bad about that. Everybody makes that mistake. And no one like who's going to tell you is your high school art teacher going to tell you that? No, they're absolutely not going to tell you that at all because they're doing that. They don't know what the hell they're doing. And that's fine. No one's asking a high school art teacher to know how to capture likeness in a caricature. You know, it's not their job. Their job is to show you some Rembrandts and, you know, tell you that Vincent Van Gogh cut off his ear and, and, and you know, take summers off. That's what they're asked to do. All right, I like this kid, but, but uh, you know, we need to do another drawing because he's just, he's just not working for me. Mojo says, yeah, I do get cut up when I'm focused on likeness, so I probably got to just let go. Yeah, man, you got to let go, dude. Got to let go. Simmons says, lol, he didn't cut off his ear. Dude, there's so much with Van Gogh that, like, people are like, this is speculative history. And I love the theory that he didn't actually, you know, end his own life. He he was, like, caught in, like, an accident with a with a young person in the town who a gun accidentally went off and all that stuff. It was like really interesting actually to hear that perspective. And it's, and it's like when you actually lay all the kind of uh, facts out, it could really be that that was the case, which is interesting. Not to say one is, you know, preferable to the other. I mean, it's a tragedy either way, but that would definitely like, I don't know. Like we, it just goes to show we don't, we think we know stuff about history like, we know for a fact that X, Y, and Z happened, but it's like, what actually happened, man? What actually happened? Damn, my hair is crazy in the back. Look at this. It's insane. Mojo says, I saw Loving Vincent a month ago. It was awesome. Oh, dude. Based. The Van Gogh episode of Doctor Who is still my favorite. Yeah. Oh, what a tearjerker, right? What a tearjerker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys are funny in the discord man all right so we're doing a three-quarter we're able to show kind of the hat sort of being being on him more in like a intense way now we can kind of draw the kid in the hat it's a bit of an easier time we'll give him that cl that this classic like a like i, I want to say like american kind of marketing button nose i kind of want to give him that nose it just feels right like a like a not a not a lion decker nose who's the guy who's that? like a rockwell nose you know like a norman rockwell ass nose a little pointy little little nose you know and he's like what you want to what you want to mess with me you want to mess with me, son? He's like, heck no. You can't mess with me. I'm Jimmy. I run this place. That's this kind of character. He's like, I'm, 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 you know, I'm the guy. Maybe he's like a gifted gunner or something. That could be fun, right? He has more, he has more, uh, more shoot downs than anyone else in the in the team he's an ace gunner and he's got a he's got like a bullet for a what does a bullet icon look like
We'll give him a sneer. I feel like he needs a sneer. Kind of more like round cheek look. He's like, what? What are, you, what are you looking at? Now needs to be even more. Yeah, what are, you, what are you looking at? Maybe his head's even too big here. <laughs> That's looking a little big on him now. <laughs> it's funny though. All right, how big is the hat on these guys? It's still pretty big on these guys, so I guess we can we can go a little, a little comical with it, you know. Yeah, great with costuming stuff. Like it's good to show the seams where things overlap, where things bevel, stuff like that. Like it's good. It's good to do. Good etiquette for costume designer. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Oh no. No, it looks like Hogarth from Iron Giant. You're right. He looks like Hogarth. Uh, unfortunate. The 2D animation stylized character paradox where all the characters look like each other. No, Hogarth is definitely in my subconscious right now designing this guy. 100% he is. It's the mouth. There we go. Fixed it. Ooh, Salmon says make him skinny and give him a scar under his eye all the way to his ear. To give him a really cool backstory of how he didn't blink in the gunfight even when the bullet was going through his face. That's that's pretty that's pretty sick. We could we could try something like that. I think you know what we could do? We could do a motif like that, like um in his with his like with his hat, you know, like maybe when he was firing, like there's there's like holes. There's like some holes in his uh in his patched hat. And that's fun because then we can show like when he's when he's firing the flaps kind of fly, fly out like that like while he's while he's shooting maybe someone like zero, zero. Zero, zero, zero. but those are so those are some great suggestions yeah he's he's tough he's a tough he's a tough kid He's a tough kid and they need him. Even though like like this guy doesn't doesn't ever doesn't want to send him out. He doesn't want to send him out, but he's like being forced to by like command or whatever. Or something. An even more sassy Hogarth. <laughs> no. Dean is too good to even be a character. Dude, we all want to be Dean. We all wish we were Dean. Yeah, this kid's a winner. This is a winner character for sure.
I'm gonna have to wrap up pretty soon, guys. Oh, perfect, perfect. Okay, sweet. Which means I have to leave in, when do I have to leave? Let's say, let's give it another, hmm. I don't know. 20, 30 minutes? We'll say 20, 30, see how we feel. It's a fun stream though. I love doing these kind of designs, they're really fun. Horses jacket's too big too. They don't have a jacket small enough for him. So it's just big. Maybe like cinched off with a belt here. Like that kind of design. That's kind of cool. Yeah. All right. We like him. We love this guy. This guy's cool. We're going to give him all sorts of cool patches on his arm. This would be like, so, okay. So if you're playing a game and this is like a choices matter style game and you lose this guy on a mission, dude, tears tears man absolute tears oh see you later mojo take care much love buddy mm. Dude, today's stream is so chill. I love it. Yeah, see, okay, so look at the difference between first drawing and second drawing. Like, when you're developing a character and you're feeling like, ooh, I know what I need to do, but this isn't cutting it. There's something about it that's not working. You don't have to force yourself to finish that drawing. You can just make a new drawing that is much more in alignment with your vision. Like, that's fine. You can totally do that. And we've just done that here, you know? We've totally done that here. We've given ourselves the opportunity to just uh, make, a, make a really cool character that we maybe wouldn't have if we had tried to brute force this drawing, right? And we can just cut that. Actually, yeah, we can, we can just cut that. He's got the bullet badge, 100% on that bullet badge lifestyle. Let's go. Just replying to a text really quick. text to my beloved my beloved cool all right all right so we got this kind of general looking guy he's good we need to we need like a winter theme though right so i feel like we need another element to his character to help us maintain this kind of cold wintry theme that we have going on right like maybe uh maybe his the interior lining of his jacket is uh let's just copy this over like let's say the interior lining is just is fur so we can just do that with kind of block silhouette here right just say it's fur and then here we'll we'll do that that helps kind of thicken the material, give it that impression of like this is a, the coat of like a winter general, you know. Um, I love our scout character. I kind of want to, I want to take him and improve him a little bit, but maybe that'll be for next stream. Maybe that'll be for next stream. Who knows? Yeah, I love this guy. This guy's great. 
the kid's great love the kid yeah this is definitely becoming one of my favorite characters i think of this whole series but he needs like a pack right because all these guys have like cool packs Give him cool kind of circular pack vibe. Man, so I had to switch to the browser version of Discord because Discord like totally broke on my computer. And uh, I just keep getting the Discord notification sound and I'm, I'm going a little crazy. Kevin Lack says, how do you get better at shape design? Buddy, the most annoying answer you'll ever get to that question and the truest answer you'll ever get to that question is to draw more. Like anybody who has great shape design, you can bet they've got 50 sketchbooks on their shelf filled. Like shape design, well, some people have a natural knack for it, um, but shape design is like, there are fundamentals you can learn with shape design, but you still got to draw a lot, like a ton, right? And I'm not talking about drawing like like uh, static things, like 100% one-to-one from reference and all that stuff. Like you got to experiment and be like, you know, like what looks better on this like alien helmet back? Is it like a shape like this or is it like a, a shape like this? You know, is it a sh is it a shape like is it a shape like this? You know, like what what is it like? What is the shape? And um, again, great advice for this kind of stuff is to think think of yourself like a calligrapher. If you want to improve your shape design, think like a calligrapher really helps. You know, is this working? Like, what does this do? What does that do? I you know when people are like, there's no such thing as like a bad xyz it's just not for the right whatever like there's no there's no such thing as a bad shape um it's just if the shape is working in the situation or not so let's look at some f like i didn't think about any of this while doing it but we can do a shape breakdown here like with the gesture we have this shape which mirrors the backpack shape interior backpack shape all that stuff right like all these things are working in tandem hats coming in here like that shape, the arm shape mirrors it as well. We have the kind of like opening lid. This kind of uh, effect is a great framing device. That's why I love those kinds of collars, those kinds of openings. That's why night helmets are so great for that kind of stuff. Um, we have the overall gesture, right? That's the overall gesture of the character. And then we have like sub gestures. So the crossed arms kind of like giving some giving some of this energy hips are going in the tail is going to be kind of going out right maybe one leg is going to be doing that the other is that or maybe they're just together that could all work but gesture shape design all that stuff it all goes hand in hand 100 percent. but drawing drawing a ton is going to be your biggest asset 100 percent. like nonsense drawings even in your sketchbook like even just doing stuff where you're like we were like, let's make this into a ribbon. And then what if, uh, what if the ribbon had like a weird spear through it and the spear was beveled and had a flag and the flag was going shoo, 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 and the, and it did this. Does that look good? Does that feel good? What's going on? You know, what if this is coming around? Like just like weird nonsensical stuff, but like just doing a ton of drawing it's going to train your brain to just naturally produce better shapes and to recognize better shapes. I think. I think shape design is one of the hardest to teach and one of the most poorly taught concepts. One of the people who did a great video on it, I think it's one of the best videos, is Cynix. Cynix did a great video on shape design. Uh, but it's hard. It's hard to teach. He teaches certain elements of it, right? Because it's a fundamental that... Um, that 
is present everywhere. But people kind of want to apply it to like, how do I apply shape design to my character design and costume and gesture? It's like applying shape design to that stuff, right? Also paying attention, like looking at cars, looking at houses, looking at anything in your life where you can identify or see distinct shapes that are trying to do something, right? Like a sports car is going to try to look like it's fast. Another car might try to look like it's strong. Another car might try to look like it's stable. It's like safe. It's calm. All that stuff matters. Same in logo design. Same in branding. Like once you start paying attention to all the minutia of life, then you can start to improve. But it's one of those things where like the better you get at something, the easier it is to continue to learn it at least for that first 80%. The last 20% is really hard. It's really hard. Um, Zella says, does anyone else compile a bunch of images on Pinterest that are interesting? Oh yeah, dude, my Pinterest is stacked. I love Pinterest. Kevin says, how did I get so good at it? Um, I think I can still improve with shape design. But one of the biggest assets, I think, was just free sketching in my sketchbook. That's what I tell everyone, is that I would just do weird shapes, strange shapes, and like kind of think like, ooh, well, what if I did this to this shape, and this over here? How do I, like, this is bad, but how do I fix it? Ooh, let's add weight here. Now it's interesting. Now that there's weight there, I can place a little head here. And now it's a little hat. Huh. Wow. Like weird stuff. Zella says, I have a bunch of sketchbooks on my shelf. They're empty though. <laughs> they looked really cool, so I had to get them, but I think they might be too nice. Oh no, he's just drawing them, drawing all of them, drawing all of them. Samman says, I delete Discord a few years ago. It was taking a lot of space on my phone. Ah, I see, I see, I see. Nice. Oh my gosh. Guys are popping off about Twitter. Let's go. Nab says, my Pinterest is a mess. <laughs> Same. There's like so many bore. I try to stay organized, but it's hard. Let's see, let's see. What do we got going on? All right, all right. We're gonna have to end the stream pretty soon, guys. But let's take a look at what we got. We got a cool, a cool kid designed. I really like this. I feel like uh, getting a character like this is a little bit like striking gold. You know what I mean? We drew a gruffy general. We got that out of our system. Like if you have a comfort zone thing, it's good to get it out of your system, right? So you're not like drawing something that's uncomfortable. Be in your comfort zone, do something, and then try something new, right? Um, maybe let's try it. Let's try to let's roll the dice one more time. Do another drawing of a character. See see what we get. Because now we're kind of loose, right? Now we're warmed up. Like you can even see how I'm doing much fewer lines. trying far less to get things going and this is what happens when you warm up for a while you get into it i feel like every time i get warmed up though i have like something in my schedule i have to go do it's so so frustrating but hey you know life happens you gotta do the things that make you happy right but sometimes that is art sometimes it's giving yourself the opportunity to really practice your your art We'll do this, little button on his hat. I feel like this is our semi-villainous character. I have a feeling. An inward pointing nose. I love a little inward pointing nose, like a nose that kind of goes in like that. I don't know why. Maybe it was from watching too much Cynics, who knows. Hmm, 
giving them a little bit too sharp in the future, I think. Cool, cool, cool. And hey, if you guys were sketching during this, definitely send me your sketches, like what you worked on. I definitely want to see them. Like I saw some from last session that people did. So fun. I love it. It's all in the eyes. When you're trying to put intention in a character, it's all in the eyes. Well, it's in everything combined, right? But even this is a little you can slim it down, I think. Let's think about tension, right? So we want the brow to be most prominent in this character. And right now it's definitely not. So what can we do here to fix it? We can take the features we have so far, shrink it down a little bit, place it a little bit closer in. Make sure that brow is much more prominent there. And we can continue the kind of momentum, I feel, because we want more energy going into the nose. Give him a little bit of a break on the edge of the mouth. That, I just love that design. I feel like that just... Uh, can really just make a design just having that extra bit of skin you know to kind of use work around push around oof this guy's looking pretty generic now i think i jinxed it yeah i think i definitely jinxed it Let's see where we're at here. So we, it felt pretty good here, right? Let's try and just use these cues. Zella says, what time is descended? Would they have ski goggles? This is in uh, like World War II-ish time. So they, yeah, they could have those, like some kind of goggle for sure. Nothing too high tech. But um, that's something we can definitely add later for sure. Bigger eyebrows, question mark? You'd think, right? But actually, I think slimier, thinner eyebrows are sometimes the way to go with characters that we want to seem very villainous. Big eyebrows are often actually more friendly than you'd imagine. We'll make him co Ooh, we'll make him more like in it, like strange, not so much evil, but like very strange.
Hmm. Let's just give him the full on. Under eye. Probably have to change this side of the face now. I like how it goes out though. Maybe we'll do that. Into the chin. Give him more of a sharp chin. There he is. There he is. Let's go. Okay, we found it. We found it. We found it. So we're like hunting for this look, right? So... Oh, yeah, that's, that feels really nice. Sick. All right, and this guy's like cloak and dagger undercover operative, man. You know, he's like, he's kind of dark. We'll give him a couple strands of hair, too. A couple sharp strands of hair, I feel. I feel like I feel like he'll get a turtleneck and like a wide collar, something kind of like that. Yeah, we don't know if this guy's good or bad, do we? He's on the good side, but for what purpose? There should definitely be an option if this, if we're like staying in the game realm, there should be an option of like, maybe he betrays you unless you like made the right choices. Then you can do dialogue options to make him stay. Like he's a really strong character and you can make him stay <clears throat> if you like know how to talk to him or something. Whoa, sorry. I totally didn't check the chat guys. Let's, let's take a look here. Dylan draws says, Hey everyone. Yo, welcome Dylan. Welcome to the chat. Let's go. Zella says, I'm working on the same thing I've been working on all week. You know, it's good. Consistency is good. Sam is just having some tea. No drawing today. Ah, rip. <laughs> Pointy. <laughs> Zella says, your character style kind of reminds me of early 2000s animation style, and I love it. You know, it's like a lost era, man. I feel like it's just a lost era, like gone, and, and it was so good. Like, it was so good. And, uh, like, what, what do we have, like, you know, forgive me if I rant a little bit, but, like, what do we have now? Like, what are the designs now? Like, it's fine, but, like, it's, like, it's just, it's all this. It's all just this. Like, this stuff, you know? Or, like, this. It's all just this. It's just the same thing. Which I guess you could say about early 2000s design as well. And, hey, there's a lot of appeal here. Let's not, let's not forget there's a lot of appeal. But like, what's going on, man? What's, what, what happened? I don't know. I don't know. We have digital art with heavy rendering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, one thing that's good is that, you know, Projects like Spider-Verse are really setting trends. Projects like Turtles are now setting big trends. Arcane setting big trends. So we're seeing at least some innovation in the 3D space. It's like some change, some growth at least. Okay, this guy, we're actually not going to give him the same fur because we want him to feel different and strange. So we might give him like, yes, we'll give him fur, but it might be like beaver. Like really like shiny, interesting, weird fur on the inside. He'll have like a different liner to set them apart maybe just enough 
just enough. There we go. Yeah, check this guy out. He's killing it, dude. He's so cool. Look at him, dude. You're going to get stabbed by him. Dude, his knife is going to be sick. It's going to be like a super interesting, weird, like, tactical knife. Definitely going to be, like, corded, you know, with the cord wrap. Like, the angled cord wrap. So it's, like, more of, like, a rectangle thing. And, like, it's going to be, like, wing, wing. Gonna be doing some damage with this guy. Or we increase the vertical. Ooh, yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Let's go. Everything leading inward. That's what we want the design to be. Everything's leading inward with him. This is going to be fun to make work, this design. Because he has to have, like, a cooler hat than this, man. It's got to be cooler than this. Whoa. So says, best I can describe is that animation today is really bubbly and older animation felt more real. Yeah, I definitely felt like we were trying to tell different stories. Which is fine, you know, different eras, different times. It's part of the deal, part of the crew, part of the ship. There we go. Um, Simon says, I'm alone at this, but I but I haven't really watched those new CGI films and animation series. I don't feel compelled to watch them. They're not. Yeah, I don't know. Me neither, man. Dylan says, do you have any classes for sale or anything like that? Well, okay. Like, it's interesting you say that. I'm experimenting with the idea of mentorship. I'm not sure how to go about doing it. I'm thinking one thing that I want to do is maybe some kind of like monthly work workshop that people can opt in. Like, I kind of like the idea that... Um, Oh, got a plane or a, yeah, a plane going overhead. Nice. Um, yeah, I'm experimenting with the idea. Maybe something on Patreon people can opt in. Like I'll lead a workshop, an interactive workshop um, where like, you know, I'll, I'll host it in the Discord, but in a different section. It'll be like an all weekend thing once a, once a month and a ticket would be like, I don't know, like 25, 30 bucks, something cheap. So that if people wanted to join in on that tier, they'll kind of join me through this workshop of covering a particular topic in character design or design or narrative or whatever. Um, but just drawing in general, art in general. Because, uh, dude, it's fun. It's fun to do. And I, I want to offer more and more specific stuff, more intensive stuff where you guys can actually produce things, get some feedback. One-on-one um, -on -one mentorship, I, I have done that before. And it's gone very well. But... Um, I want to make sure that I have the infrastructure in my life to be able to give that the time and the honor that it deserves. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with classes and mentorships. But um, for now, well, for now, one thing that is kind of like, you know, I kind of facilitate is a character design challenge that I do with the patrons of the, of the channel, patrons in the description, and we do... 
um, character design challenges like multiple times a week. This week has been super slow. So apologies to all the patrons for that. But um, we're going to be doing, we're going to be back on schedule with that. And basically we do like one hour character design challenges and stuff. And, uh, and yeah, we kind of just like take an hour to design a character and then see how it goes. And we all kind of learn, we share intentions, we reflect on how it went. And I haven't been doing like a teacher role with that yet. Um, but who knows? Who knows, man? We'll see. We'll see how things change in the future. But that's what we have right now is that very, it's like a, a group that everyone participates in, in the discord and stuff. It's pretty fun. But yeah, that's in the description. And it's like three bucks to join a month and you can join it. We have an incredible community. Everybody's been so supportive with each other in the discord. Like it blows my mind. And uh, I'm really looking forward to continue to be active and get more active with that community as well. 100%. Yeah, and hey, you know, the patrons really make the channel possible. Like, we're not monetized yet, so it's hard to justify spending this much time on the stream and drawing online. But hey, man, you know, while things in the industry are super slow and going to going to heck, we can uh, we can hop on and do stuff together, right? <laughs> But yeah, workshops, workshops is something I'm very, very invested in for sure. Colin asks, are we still doing the CDC today? Heck yeah, we are. 100% we are, which actually we got to do that now. We got to do it now. cool let me announce that actually i love that it's just like called cd like we just like call it the cdc it's hilarious cool um kevin says is drawing on stream different from drawing by yourself oh my gosh yeah 100 percent it is but what's interesting is actually the past couple streams i've been like totally relaxed and taking all the pressure off myself to like do anything extravagant and weirdly enough i've been making work that i like a lot more like today i feel like this was very natural just kind of like how i normally would draw by myself or with my friends you know what we kind of came to so even let's do a little postmortem before we end the stream so Looking at this guy, he you can kind of see in these earlier drawings, it's a lot more stiff. The lines are much more searching, you know, kind of scratchy. I still like it. I think it's a successful design, but it's definitely got that rust on it, you know. Um, this drawing, I felt like was great. I love this design. I love this kid. I feel like you don't really need much more than this. Maybe just him like on like sitting on the gun in the gunner seat, right? And then this guy over here, fantastic. I love this drawing. We busted it out real quick. And that's what happens when you allow yourself to warm up and stay loose, not get tunnel visioned on a thing, but just keep moving, keep moving forward. Um, yeah, exactly. It's so funny. Yeah, CDC <laughs> does stand for Center of Disease Control, but um, we're calling it uh, the Character Design Challenge for sure. <laughs> cool. So, boom, boom, pow, guys. Boom, boom, pow. This is so sick. <laughs> I love streaming with everybody. It's so awesome. So yeah, this last guy felt really good. Not bad for an hour and a half. Not bad. Um, so let's look at our cast right now. We have gruff old guy. I'm getting too old for this. You guys gotta, you guys go on without me. I'll hold them back. I'll land the plane. You guys gotta go. We got this guy who's very sleepy and chill or whatever. He's like like a UK guy, like he probably talks like this a little bit, yeah. He's he's cool and calm and collected. We've got the scout who doesn't talk ever. And we have this girl who probably talks like this, or something like this. Yes. Or she talks like this. I think we should do this, not that. Like that kind of character, you know what I mean? Or it's just Scarlett Johansson. It's just Scarlett Johansson. 
just woke up. We've got, um, we've got, I know what we have to do, but I don't know if we have the strength to do it. We've got this kid. Don't mess with him. I don't know what I want anymore. This conflict has gone on for too long. I'm leaving. Right? Those are our characters we have. That's a pretty good cast. Maybe a few more. We definitely need a couple more ladies, that's for sure. <laughs> round out the round out the cast, you know, some some improved diversity. This is definitely like, you know, European conflict, so you'll see some ethnic diversity too though, for sure. We'll include that. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I love you guys. This was super fun. So uh, I hope you guys learned something today. Uh, if not, then sorry. But I, you know, <laughs> there's probably something you could learn from today. If you did learn anything, let me know in the comments. Uh, if you like the stream, definitely drop a like for sure. It helps out a bunch. We're trying to we're trying to get um, the watch hours up. We're trying to get the channel monetized so that YouTube actually wants to show the videos around. So like. Yeah, definitely let me know what you think in the comments for sure. And uh, if you want to catch more videos, subscribe. If you want to catch them live, hit the notifications. Um, and yeah, if you want to join our Discord community, it's just three bucks a month and it's awesome. It's very supportive and everybody's posting their sketches all the time. It's great. And uh, yeah, you guys are fantastic. And I'll, I'll see you on the next one. The next stream, uh, guaranteed the next stream will be Tuesday. I stream Tuesday, Thursday, Friday without fail. Um, but uh yeah i might stream this weekend I'm, i think i might be feeling it a little bit here and there maybe but uh yeah you guys are awesome best best community ever you guys are great we need a name for the community because you guys are so consistent with coming on so i feel like uh i, I don't know I, I don't know i don't know what it is you know maybe gabriel's goobers no that's too weird we'll see but yeah much love everybody i will catch you all in the next one <laughs> peace out